It just doesn't get any better than that. It can always get better. Mornings at 10. Now is Max World. You just mind your P's and Q's, buster, and remember who you're dealing with. 98.3. Wow. FM. Now this is a story all about how my life got... 220, straight up uh, 98.3. Wow, wow FM. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Mac is uh, on assignment today. By the way, hello to everyone listening online. Um, see you guys later. Uh, with me is Mark Bunker, the uh, director, head honcho, creator of Xenu TV, the Emmy Award winning uh, director of Xenu TV. And um, today we're talking about the, uh, the Church of Scientology. I, I want to I make one thing clear, and I think you're with me, uh, Mark. Members of the the church, the the followers, the the believers, really more so victims than 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 bad guys, and I want to make that clear. Absolutely, I, I think the vast majority of people in Scientology are are wonderful, decent, uh, intelligent people, and that's that's the hard part to understand because when you hear about the mythology of Scientology, you you say, well, how can anybody believe this? Well, as I said before, you're being stripped of your reality, and it's being replaced by Hubbard's, and, and it happens slowly. Um, once you reach the upper levels, l- let me just quickly explain OT3 before we move on. All right. Am I ready for this? Because I, I hear uh, it could, my uh, head will explode. L. Ron Hubbard said if you, if you hear this material before you're prepared, you could catch pneumonia and die. I do have one hell of a cold going on. Well, this may be a fatal to blow to you. All right, hit me. But, but uh, once you reach the uh, exalted uh, level of OT3, you discover that 75 million years ago, Earth was known as Tigiak and was ruled over by the evil overlord uh, Xenu, who to solve the overpopulation problem, this sector of the galaxy, as L. Ron Hubbard liked to pronounce it, took us all, stuffed us into volcanoes, and blew us up with hydrogen bombs far more powerful than those we have today. Now, the exploded souls of these uh, Thetans uh, uh, kind of fused together and came clusters of Thetans that attached themselves to our bodies. So these invisible dead clusters of space aliens are now called body Thetans, or BTs. And once you reach the upper levels of Scientology, you are going to spend all of your time with an e-meter, which is an electronic device, it's kind of like a, a, a lie detector. You hold on to two soup cans and you're watching the needle move. And you're going to try to locate these BTs on your body and in your vicinity. And you're going to explain to them that it's okay, you were blown up in a volcano by Xenu, you're confused, you can go now. And you try to get those off of your body. And once you've removed all of you, those BTs from you, then... You can control matter, energy, space, and time. Mest. And when you can control mest, you become a being much like Q on Star Trek The Next Generation, where you can travel uh, outside your body. You can move things with your mind. You can have all of these super-duper powers. Can I give Riker those powers as well? Yes, you can, because you are an OT, and he himself uh, is capable of being an OT. And they want you in Scientology to become an OT, and the, the, the um, hard press is on from the second you, you sign up to move up to bridge and gain your OT powers. All right, so basically, LRH says I have BTs that I need to e-meter out to become OT. Right. WTF. Right. But now, when you're in the early courses, you're not auditing BTs. You're dealing with problems in your life. You're, uh, you're doing auditing, which is uh, a, a kind of a therapy session with uh, another person using the e-meter. You're sitting down and trying to remember, remember painful experiences from your life. You'll, uh, you'll think back to the time when your, your dad uh, slapped you, and, and you'll cry about it. And you'll say, oh, it was terrible. And, and they'll say, okay, tell it to me again, only remember more details. What, what, did you hear music in the background? What was... What, what could you smell at the moment? And they want you to repeat the incident over and over and over until you are no longer upset by it. You've cleared that incident of your life. So in the early stages of Scientology, you're clearing all of these negative experiences in your life until they have no effect on you anymore, and you can move forward 
and and not react negatively to these these past incidents. So in Scientology, you you are being trained in how to uh, use the e meter, how to uh, audit these incidents. You are agreeing with them that this process works. So by the time you reach the upper levels, when you stop auditing you, and suddenly you're auditing BTs, you're already you already believe in the process. But but yeah, by that point, reality is just kind of a, a mess to you anyway. So you follow the training, right? And all okay. along the way, and this is the, this is part of the insidious nature of it. After every course that you take, you have to sit down and write your wins, what you think you got from the course. So you'll have you'll force your, you have to sit down and force yourself to think. Well, I guess I did learn how to communicate better because of this. You have to put that on paper and present it to them. That forces you to to think. Well, okay, I did get something from it, but it also gives them a piece of paper in a folder that they can pull out at any time. If you're expressing doubts and you want to leave the group, they can pull that folder out and say, "Listen." You had all these wins. Look at all the progress you're making. You don't want to give up now. Well, let's 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 turn the table because I, I hear the stories of people who might want to get out and along while you're being audited, you may let some secrets fly. And I'm, I'm not going to name any Lots names. Of secrets. I'm not going to name any names, but let's say, for example, um, a famous actor was going to leave, and and they would <laughs> say, you know, we might talk about your uh, your love of mankind, if you will, uh, if you happen to leave Scientology. So why don't you give it a, a second thought? That is in the back of people's minds. Now, um, a lot of people might have thought that about a particular actor whose video was leaked onto the Internet recently. Um, I, I thought that was a possibility in the past. I, I don't think that's the case now. If you see the, the video of Tom Cruise... This is a dedicated man who believes 100% in Scientology and in L. Ron Hubbard. And this is, you know, the, the role model for being a Scientologist. This is what you get turned into. Uh, the most important thing in the world is Scientology, keeping Scientology working. Uh, but uh, for those people who aren't so dedicated, that is a problem, that they have all your innermost secrets, not only written down in folders, but my understanding is that uh, over the past many years, now all of your audit, uh, auditing sessions are videotaped. I've seen um, video that was shot by uh, a, a Spanish film crew when they went undercover with hidden cameras. And you can see them in the auditing room. There's a security camera pointed right at uh, the people who are in, in essence, giving confessions during these auditing Well, sessions. and that, that's kind of what I wanted to, uh, to lead into. Because, look, uh, pick any belief system. You're going to find weird and un unusual beliefs that, if, if you're not a member, sound weird. So as, as, as interesting as intergalactic overlord Xenu is, and as much as I love volcanic activity, uh, it's, it's, it's the <laughs> business side. And like I, like I opened the segment with, you know, the, the members of Scientology, the people in it, uh, really victims uh, of the leaders. And when you hear more about kind of the, the history uh, of the, the group, like uh, Fair Game, for example. I brought this up to a Scientologist once, and uh, he puckered, for lack of a, a, a better <laughs> term. Now, look, now, look, I am protected, but should I expect the, the Scientology party van to, to come up? Now I think you're pretty safe. Show. I think they're, they're going to be uh, calling you nonstop now, trying to get on the air to rebut this. And, and if they want to call in and talk, I'm, I'm always That's happy fine. to talk to them. Let me, let me tell you what they would say about Fair Game. In 1965, L. Ron Hubbard wrote this policy called Fair Game, in which he laid out how you deal with an SP. And in Scientology, an SP is a suppressive person. And a suppressive person is anyone who tries to do anything to stop Scientology in their tracks. And in the fair game policy, he said that an SP can be lied to, tricked, sued, or destroyed by any means by any Scientologist without retribution against the Scientologist. Now, Scientology, well, by the way, what a wonderful religious thought that is. Uh, how would you like the religious leader of, of your organization to be putting out an order like that. Well, they they did. They called that era the Middle Ages. <laughs> they burned yeah, a right. lot of people back then. <laughs> well, I, I guess, uh, you know, the 60s was the Middle Ages for L. Ron Hubbard. Um, 
they, now Scientology 